I like Benjamin Bunny. <laughs> you want to sit on my knee? That'll be the next thing. Well, <laughs> let me get my chair. Yeah, this will be like... You want to get your teddy bear and all? <laughs> I used to have a bunny when I was little. Huh? Said I had a little toy bunny or something when I was little. I don't remember things like that. It was in the picture. Oh. Yeah, this will go with Peter Rabbit. You have Peter Rabbit, now I can have Benjamin Bunny. This is Benjamin, The Tale of Benjamin Bunny by Beatrice Potter. Potter. One morning, a little rabbit sat on a bank. He pricked his ears and listened to the trit-trot, trit-trot of a pony. A gig was coming along the road. It was driven by Mr. McGregor, and beside him sat Mrs. McGregor in her best bonnet. As soon as they had passed, little Benjamin Bunny slid down into the road and set off with a hop, skip, and a jump to call upon his relation, who lived in the woods at the back of Mr. McGregor's garden. That wood was full of rabbit holes, and in the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin Ann, Benjamin's Ann and his cousin, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Yeah, but old Mrs. Rabbit was a widow. She earned a living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and muffetees. I once bought a pair at, at a bazaar. She also sold her herbs and rosemary tea, and rabbit tobacco, which is what we call lavender. Mm. Little Benjamin did not very much want to see his aunt. He came around the back of a fir tree and nearly stumbled upon the top of his cousin Peter. Can you, once in a while, look in here like you're t talking, see right here? Like you're, you know, <laughs> yeah, see, like you're, Peter was sitting by himself. He looked poorly and was dressed in a red cotton pocket handkerchief. Hmm. Peter said little Benjamin in a whisper, who has got your clothes? Hmm. Peter replied, that scarecrow in Mr. McGregor's garden and described how he had been chased about the garden and had dropped his coat and his shoes. Little Benjamin sat, beside, sat down beside his cousin and assured him that Mr. McGregor had gone out in a gig, and Mrs. McGregor also, and certainly for the day, because she was wearing her best bonnet. Hmm. Peter said he hoped that it would rain. At this point, old Mrs. Rabbit's voice was heard inside the rabbit hole calling, Cottontail, Cottontail, fetch some more chamomile. Peter said he thought he might feel better if he went for a walk. They went away hand in hand and got upon the flat top of the wall at the bottom of the wood. From there, from here, they looked down into Mrs. McGregor, Mr. McGregor's garden. Peter's coat and shoes were plainly to be seen on the scarecrow, top of an old hammer shanty of Mr. McGregor's. Oh, I was wondering where they were, because... <laughs> Little Benjamin said, it spoils people's clothes to squeeze under a gate. The proper way to get in is to climb down a pear tree. Peter fell down head first, but it was of no consequence, as the bed below was newly raked and quite soft. It had been sewn with lettuces that they left a great many odd little footmarks all over the bed, especially little Benjamin, who was wearing clogs. Mm, kind of little Benjamin said that the first thing he to be done was to get back Peter's clothes in order that they might be able to use the pocket handkerchief. Mm. They took them off the scarecrows. There had been rain during the night. There was water in the shoes and the coat was somewhat shrunk. Benjamin tried on his on the tam o shanter, but it was too big for him. Then he suggested they should fill the pocket handkerchief with onions as a little present for his aunt. Hmm. Peter did not seem to be enjoying himself. He kept hearing noises. Benjamin, on the contrary, was perfectly at home 
and ate a lettuce leaf. He said that he was in the habit of coming to the garden with his father to get lettuce for their Sunday dinner. The name of little Benjamin's papa was old Mr. Benjamin Bunny. Mm. The lettuces were cer certainly were very fine. Peter did not eat anything. He said he should like to go home. Mm. Presently, he dropped half of the onions. Mm. Little Benjamin said that it was not possible to get back up pear tree with a load of vegetables. He led the way boldly toward the other end of the garden. They went along a little walk on planks under a sunny red brick wall. The mice sat on their doors, on their doorsteps, cracking cherry stones. They winked at Peter Rabbit and a little Benjamin Bunny. Presently, Peter let the pocket handkerchief go again. They got amongst flower pots and frames and tubs. Peter heard noises worse than ever. His eyes were big as lollipops. He was a step or two in front of his cousin when suddenly he stopped. This is what those little rabbits saw around the corner. Little Benjamin took one look and then in half a minute, less than no time, he hid himself and Peter and the onions underneath a large basket. The cat got up and stretched himself and came and sniffed at the basket. Perhaps she liked the smell of onions. Anyway, she sat down upon the top of the baskets. She sat there for five hours. Huh. It's a long time. I cannot draw you a picture of Peter and Benjamin underneath the basket because it was quite dark and because the smell of onions was fearful. It made Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin cry. The sun got round behind the wood, and it was quite late in the afternoon, but still the cat sat upon the basket. At last there was a pitter patter pitter patter and some bits of mortar fell from the wall above. The cat looked up and saw old Mr. Benjamin Bunny prancing along the top of the wall of the upper terrace. He was smoking a pipe of tobacco, rabbit tobacco and he had a little switch in his hand. He was looking for his son. Hmm. Oh, Mr. Bunny had no opinion whatsoever of cats. He took a tremendous jump off the top of the wall onto the top of the cat and, the cat, and cupped it off the basket and kicked it into the greenhouse, scratching off a handful of fur. The cat was too much surprised to scratch back. Hmm. When Mr. When old Mr. Bunny had driven the cat into the greenhouse, he locked the door. Then he came back to the basket and took out his son Benjamin by the ears and whipped him with the little switch. Hmm. Then he took out his nephew Peter. Hmm. Then he took out the handkerchief of onions and marched out of the garden. When Mr. McGregor returned about half an hour later, oh, he observed several things which perplexed him. It looked as though some person had been walking all over the garden in a pair of clogs. Only the foot marks were too ridiculously little. Also, he could not understand how the cat could have managed to shut itself up inside the greenhouse, locking the door upon the outside. When Peter got home, his mother forgave him because she was so glad to see that he had found his shoes and his coat. Hmm. Cottontail and Peter folded up the pocket handkerchief and old Mrs. Rabbit strung up the onions and hung them from the kitchen ceiling with the bunches of herbs and rabbit tobacco. The end. Hmm. Now you have to go to bed. <laughs> oh, that's good. Now I get Peter Rabbit. I'm not reading anymore. No, no. I could sell them. <laughs>